I go as far to say that this was my favorite episode of Tower God today, and it just feels like with each week, the more we learn about the characters and world, the better it gets, which is why I completely understand why people say, you know, once we get to season two, it'll be better than season one, and you know, so on and so on, because the world and the characters, they just explode. Like, you can look at this episode in particular, and the idea of Coon's bag, that's enough to hold an episode together, give it a nice curveball. Obviously, there's been stuff going on with his bag since the beginning, but the idea of, like, duplication, and not only that, but literally carrying a team in your bag, that's enough to be shocking to say, okay, that was a great twist, and it's really going to make this episode memorable. But then you add in the whole, okay, bam, what the hell's going on with you? Why are you basically giving off a light tsunami? And why is it that apparently you're breaking the rules and foundations that this tower is known for? As well, is good enough. And then you throw in the Rachel and her team, didn't even want the crown, literally was aiding in it, and it's like, why? Why is this happening? Why are these characters happening and functioning in this particular way? So the fact that we had like three episodes worth of twists and turns, yet nothing felt jarring as if it was well paced, and you felt like, okay, you, we've had time to really soak in and be shocked with our jaw on the floor, so by the time we pick it back up, they throw us yet again another one. And it makes episodes like these really stick out. It's gorgeously animated, it's fun, it's action-packed, you're seeing just everything that we love about Tower of God. But then when you sit back and relax a little bit and think, okay, but why? Why is this happening? Why is it that Rachel is here? Why is it that she's not attacking Bam, but then also saying it's fine if characters like him die? It's like, there's just a lot of things happening and we don't know. And that's why when she pops up at the end of the episode towards you know, Bam's room, it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. You really don't. And that's an incredibly exciting feeling because honestly, shows like these, especially in the early stages, we're only five episodes into Tower of God. It's going to be a very long running show. We already know that as it's already a very long webtoon. It's super easy for us to feel like we know the formula. We know where everything's going to go. Maybe there's a couple of characters here or there that are very easy to predict. But honestly, with Tower of God, every time something happens, I think to myself, logically, Rachel should be attacking Bam here. She's not, but I still don't trust her, but she's not doing it, and I don't know why. Like, what's the point of this other team, and what's going on? Like, obviously, I understand that the whole Tess administrator and just trying to kind of wean out the people who are going to bring chaos to the tower, that makes sense, but at the same time, it still doesn't make sense, and that is an incredibly fun feeling because we have characters who are recognizing, like, Bam is probably a danger to the tower. He probably is. He did something that honestly shouldn't happen, and if it wasn't for the Guardian of the Sword coming in to give him a goodnight kiss, he would have killed that person. And whether, even though, the, you know, the rules state that it's okay to kill people during this test, at the same time, like, that's not what Bam would want to do. And I'm definitely curious, I have to say, about what they're going to do with Bam's character, because the idea of him having this insane power, that's not shocking, that's actually pretty formulaic for a show like this. But the thing with it is, is since this is happening so early, we still have room to kind of shock us with like what people would want to say a power up, but it really wasn't. What that was, was his true power, and we just don't know everything about Bam and what he's capable of. So when things like that happen, especially because it happened in an emotionally straining moment where, honestly, Rachel almost got killed, he got, you know, almost killed himself, it's understandable why something would kind of lash out almost like, you know, it's like a parental thing where... If your kid's in danger, just things happen, you don't even know what's going on, but you get this strength that you didn't know you had. So, it doesn't feel like an ass pull or anything like that. It feels like, okay, because of where we're at in the story, it's not like we've established Bam as a character of that. These are his powers, these are his limitations, and because something bad happened to someone he cares about, he unlocks a new Super Saiyan form or something like that. No, like, that's not what happened, so it's really nice to see because we're just shocked, we're like, okay, not only does it visually look cool, it looks devastating, is Bam a monster? We just don't know what's going on, that's really exciting to me, because it gives it a lot of possibilities, because every time we focus in, we're like, okay, the thing that probably most people were focusing in on was the bag, because we've known, like, what the hell, like, where are you getting all these chocolate bars, why do you have so many crowns, and you can carry a team, like, what the hell, like, that's what we're focusing on, which is why I think a lot of people are probably quite shocked by what Bam did in this episode, because we probably thought it was going to be mostly Kuhn focused because that's what it was kind of like focusing in on. Yeah, we got something so much better. We got so many characters just flourishing with a really great action. One of my favorite shots in this episode is when basically the knives are being thrown around. I love how they detailed it because in motion it looks very like there's a little abstract to it, but it looks very fun. And then even when you pause it, it just looks really cool, which is pretty much the action in general. They have an anime style for its animation, but at the same time, there definitely is freedom to feel like it's picking and choosing from different cultures and how to animate certain aspects to the show. 
and I think it's doing wonders to make it feel like an anime, but at the same time, feel like it's trying to push on into its new territory, which is exactly what this new age of webtoon anime should be, doing something different while still staying true to the fundamentals that makes this medium so great to begin with. And I mean, just like every time we look at a character, they're always interesting. Like one of our main characters is a giant talking crocodile looking creature. Like, come on now, like we're going to have some pretty fun visuals. And pretty much all the characters are like even the standard normal humans are pretty damn fun, I have to say. Because, like, they always have, like, these, like, ridiculous outfits or they have these ridiculous, you know, facial reactions and things like that. It always just brings a smile to my face because it's just so fun and just so, it's Tower of God. Like, I've never looked at anything in this show and felt like I needed to compare it to something I've seen before. Which is honestly saying something because some of the human characters, you can argue, okay, yeah, they do remind me of this anime or this character from this other show. Maybe, but at the same time, when you really look at a scene in general, it doesn't feel to me like it feels like it's trying to be something else or it's trying to be just something that it can't be. Instead, it's like, hey, I'm Tower of God. I'm going to have an interesting color palette. I'm going to have an interesting and distinct animation style. And these voice actors are hitting it at the part. It's really fun just to see episodes where mostly it's dominated by action. Yet we can argue it's had just as much story as some of the best story episodes over the past week. Because rather than just saying, here's a bunch of characters you don't know or don't care about, even when there are a lot of new faces, because we have a connection to Kuhn or Rack or Bam, it allows for us to really care what's happening. So when Bam realizes that it looks like Rachel's going to get killed, he jumps off the throne even knowing that it's going to sacrifice him the win, because that's who he is. People are going to make their jab saying, oh, he's being a simp or he's doing this or that. But if the person that pretty much raised him after he lost his memory is in danger, it would make a lot less sense for him not to do that because literally like that's his character at this point in time. He hasn't been alone enough. He hasn't been able to forge his own path. He's still very much tied to this girl, whether that's a good or bad thing remains to be seen. I mean, according to the internet, it's a bad thing, but at the same time, bad characters, quote unquote bad characters can be really well written, which is kind of what I'm expecting with Rachel based on what I'm seeing so far. And I'm really excited to see like what's going to happen when Bam has that realization that he needs to be his own person rather than being dependent. And it's going to be interesting to see what that wake up call is going to look like because it's going to be something quite remarkable. At this point in time, I'm not sure who I would say is my favorite character in the show. It's kind of a toss up right now between Rack and Kuhn. Like both are just so interesting. You look at Rack. I mean, this dude has some of the best faces and the fact that he's just munching on chocolate bars being like, hey, this is an endless dispenser. That's amazing in my books. Keep them coming. Like, it's great. He's a badass warrior, but at the same time, he has a Krogan persona from Mass Effect, which is, like, one of my favorite just designs for a character. Strong brute warrior, but goddamn can they make you laugh. And Kuhn is just such a mystery. He's such an anomaly. And the more you learn about his arsenal and just how he thinks and operates, the more it's like, this man is a genius, and you're really glad he's on our side. And even Bam himself is becoming someone I'm really enjoying seeing, rather than feeling like he's a wish fulfillment or insert for the viewer, rather I'm like, okay, the longer we're watching, the more I'm seeing who his character is, and I can definitely see how he's going to transition into someone completely different down the line, which has me really excited, and honestly, even the supporting cast, like Anak and things like that, they're just interesting to me. I don't get bored by any character talking, and the more conspiracies or just questions that it brings up, the more I... I'm enthusiastic about watching future episodes, which says a hell of a lot. The soundtrack as well has just been slapping all the right notes. Like, this is one of those shows that you don't skip its opening, you don't skip its ending, and every time music is playing, and it's mostly been dominated in the action focus scenes so far. There has been moments outside of action that have been quite memorable, but at the same time, it feels like when we get into those exhilarating scenes, not only do I love looking at them because they're just visually impressive to me and I love the style that they're choosing because it feels classic anime, but also doing something completely interesting and unique, but the music is what ties it together. Like the voice actors are hitting it out of the park. Don't get me wrong. Like they're doing amazing. Look at Rack. That's a voice that could easily be just like either super cringy because it's just so fake that you don't buy it, but the way they portray it is it doesn't feel like a human, but at the same time it has elements that feel human, but then it'll go right back into calling people turtles and you're like, yeah, that's not a human character. The voice actors are killing it, but goddamn the music is good. I'll be shocked if this isn't my favorite soundtrack of the season, honestly. I think this will be. It feels like there's definitely competition in certain areas, but at the same time, this soundtrack, and I love my man who made this, he's just so good at just crafting, whether it's something exhilarating or emotionally gripping, he just does so great. Like, Kevin just always hits it out of the park with this stuff, and in all honesty, I think he's probably my most anticipated, like, OST crafter. Like, just when I hear he's making something, whether it's for an action show or it's something more slice of life drama, like, whatever it is, I'm going to be excited, and 
Honestly, if the music was like half the quality as it currently is, I don't think I would have been as invested as Tower of God as I currently am. I'd still like it. I'd still probably consider it great. But the music is definitely just like all the elements kind of working harmony is elevating this into an amazing and one could say even an exceptional experience, which is really fun to say. Tower of God is a remarkable anime. I think it's wonderful. It's one of the best. It might even be the best anime of the season when it does wrap up. And that's not because there isn't competition because everything's getting delayed. It's just because it's a damn good show and probably going to be a lot of people's favorite of the year or one of their favorites of this year. But as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this week's episode of Tower of God down in the comment section below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Your favorite moment where you feel? Let me know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, share your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.